Any food or dietary supplements that we mentioned in this presentation are intended to contribute to the daily diet and overall health, and they're not intended for use in the prevention, treatment, mitigation, or cure of any disease or health-related condition. Individuals who have or suspect that they have an illness or who wish to commence a diet or exercise program should consult an appropriately licensed healthcare practitioner for medical history evaluation, diagnosis, treatment, and health recommendations. Welcome to the Health and Wellness Hour with Dr. Joel Wallach and pharmacist Keith Abel. They believe when it comes to nutrition and supplementation, the modern medical system has failed you, that our body is divinely designed to repair itself given the correct foundation of nutrients. With a combined 85 years experience in health, nutrition, and supplementation, they bring a unique perspective on how to manage disease and improve one's health. Over the next hour, Dr. Wallach and pharmacist Keith will discuss health and wellness topics seen in the news. They'll discuss trends in nutrition and supplementation and how you can take control of your own health and your future. Let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Medical System Has Failed You Call. My name is Pharmacist Keith Abel. I am a practicing pharmacist. I'm a certified holistic health coach, uh, a home business entrepreneur, and I help other people get healthy and create some extra wealth for their families. Today, we have a very special guest. And a, a special episode, it's Dr. Joel Wallach. He is a soil scientist, a veterinarian, a pathologist, a naturopathic physician. He's got over 60 years of biomedical research under his belt. He's done over 20,000 autopsies, over 3,000 autopsies on humans for comparison. He's authored over 75 journal articles, peer-reviewed journal articles that are both in medical journals and scientific journals. He's written 15 books. I'm sure he's working on another one as we speak because he's always writing prolific writer. He, his original cassette tape, the very first cassette tape that he ever produced is called Dead Doctors Don't Lie. Uh, that has now been uh, reproduced into CD, DVD, uh, video, uh, and there's over 600 million copies in nine different languages out there. So Dr. Wallach, I want to welcome to the show. And thanks for taking time out for us. Okay, well, thanks for the kind words, Pharmacist Keith, and thank you so much, everybody, for joining us uh, early in the morning out there in uh, in Hawaii and sort of mid morning on the East Coast here, and who knows the time zones. And so, um, basically, um, I, I want to say a couple of things here. Uh, number one, you've, you've done a great job on the. Uh, background there, except that I've done 32,000 autopsies, 8,000 humans. <laughs> and uh, my thesis uh, for my postdoctoral fellowship, which is kind of like a PhD degree in my pathology, is in the Smithsonian Institute as a National Treasure. 1988, I got the, um, let's see here, I got the Wooster Beach Award from the Eclectic Scientist uh, in 1988. 2011, I, I got the Klaus Schwartz Award for showing that. Um, uh, the selenium deficiency causes so many things. And of course, selenium deficiency causes the liver and pancreatic lesions of cystic fibrosis. We've pretty much eliminated cystic fibrosis thought to be a genetic disease, which is not. Um, we've eliminated muscular dystrophy. You haven't heard anything about that. And of course, I gave uh, this information to Jerry Lewis. Um, uh, gosh, it's got to be seven years ago now. Uh, he was so excited uh, to see these charts of all these kids we had reversed their muscular dystrophy in. He took it to the Mustrisfi Association. They immediately fired him in 2011. And I actually have a two CD set coming out here this week that documents that terrible, terrible series of events. And um, then by 2015, the telethon was dead because without Jer Jerry Lewis, uh, they couldn't raise a penny. And so, um, and then of course, um, let's see here, April 16, 2000, um, 13, a federal rule that this one nutrient that I've been yelling about for 25 years had to be put into baby formulas. And, and of course, for those 25 years, the medical system says, don't, don't put that nutrient into baby formulas. It's poisonous. Okay. Well, it's an essential nutrient. And uh, there's this rule that it had to be put into the baby formulas like Infamil, Similac, that sort of thing. So it was. And a year later, we're talking about, um, let's see here, September 13th, 2014, uh, big headlines. I mean, we're like third world war, big bull headlines on the front page of the um, 
Charlotte Observer, okay, kind of like New York Times for New York, Charlotte Observer in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. We don't know why, but sudden of a death syndrome has vanished in the state of North Carolina. Three months later, the state of Missouri came out and said, we don't know why, but the sudden of a death syndrome has vanished in the state of Missouri. Three months later, every newspaper in the world came out and said, we don't know why, but the rate of, uh, excuse me, the rate of sudden of a death syndrome has dropped drastically by 85 to 95% in every country. That's because we had that one nutrient put into the baby formulas. Baby formulas only had three minerals in it. There's 60 essential minerals. Where were they going to get the other 57? Chewing on their crib rail? I mean, come on. And so um, this is, I'm very, very excited about that. And then, of course, now comes COVID, okay? And you have to appreciate right now in America, there's almost 4 million. There's 3,898,694 documented cases of COVID virus. Uh, deaths in the United States as of this morning were 143,289, okay? And all this is totally unnecessary. And I knew this as soon as it came out and I looked up COVID virus in October of last year. And um, when a three-year-old, a five-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 15-year-old gets the COVID infection, pharmacist Keith, they might get a fever for three or four days of 100 degrees, right? barely can be registered as a fever, and, and, and it's over with. Uh, they get minor common cold-like symptoms. When a 20 to 30-year-old get it, they might get some a fever of 102, 103. Um, they might have some stuff going on. And they'll put them in the hospital for a couple of weeks because that's what doctors do, and n very few die. And then you get into the 30s and 40s. We're talking about millennials. Uh, they're a little more uh, susceptible to serious life-threatening stuff. And you get into the 60s, 70s, and 80s, um, have a very high rate of serious complications and death. So what's the difference between a 73-year-old and a 3-year-old? Why does a 3-year-old only get common cold-like symptoms and a 73-year-old dies? Okay. Well, that's because a 73-year-old has been eating gluten for 73 years. Now, gluten damage to your intestines is not an all-or-nothing thing. It's not a light switch on, light switch off. It's uh, one of those things where um, it's a drip, 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 drip thing. And so you can be eating gluten for 20 years. You might get eczema. Okay, you might get a little rash, that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, that kind of thing. And then um, when you look at it, uh, let's say you're 50 years old now. You could have 50, 60, 70% of your intestines damaged, and you still really don't have any real serious things. You might get diagnosed with um, oh things like uh, irritable bowel syndrome, um, celiac disease, diverticulitis, that kind of stuff, Crohn's disease. And a doctor will put you on some, um, what, a year pharmacist, you know, they'll put you on some steroids, anti-inflammatory stuff to calm your intestines down. And most of them, if they really know what they're doing, they'll put them on what kind of diet? A, a gluten-free diet. Okay, when they have all these bowel issues and they calm things down. But if they don't get on a gluten-free diet and they're still eating gluten, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. By the time they're 73 years old, they have 95 to 98% of their intestines damaged, less than 3% absorption efficiency, and now we got big problems. Now we got big problems. And here's the deal. Um, when you look at the cause of death, I went through and looked at literally thousands of autopsies here, okay, online. Thank God for that. I don't have to run around looking at bloody bodies anymore. And so I'm looking at all these autopsies that have been reported, you know, 10 here, 20 here, 3 here. And the, the cause of death, the cause of death of these people is not a viral pneumonia. The cause of death in most cases is either the pre-existing conditions, okay, such as diabetes, obesity. Um, it could be, um, let's see here, they could also throw in hemorrhaging. I think 40% die from hemorrhage. Well, why is that? Well... Uh, one of the things that comes along early uh, in a COVID infection is um, something called, um, let's see here, mm -mm, let's see, I got it written down here. Oh, thrombocytic uh, cytopenia, which means that their bone marrow is not making any platelets or very few. And so they begin to get, they have, well, I got a bloody nose, my, I have bleeding gums. Oh, I'll get, send you to the dentist. No, it's a bone marrow thing. Okay. And then, um, they, they're anemic, and so they get uh, injections of B12 and iron shots, and they'll give them transfusions. 
okay? And then they don't have any white blood cells. And so there's nothing there to defend them against the COVID virus now. Well, when they're three years old, there's none of that happening yet. And so their bone marrow sends out the white blood cells to kill and eat the viruses. Their stem cells and their bone marrow, and we're talking about three-year-olds now, their stem cells make antibodies to kill the virus. And then they're making lots of platelets. They don't have any bleeding. Okay, and so all this is, is going on here. And so I finally found it. I found what I was looking for. Okay, what happens when somebody comes to a doctor and they've got COVID, they got all, I mean, they've got every possible complication of COVID except death. Okay, there they are in trouble. And uh, he says, okay, you've got some uh, um, celiac disease here in diverticulitis. So I'm gonna put you on steroids. Okay, and I'm going to put you on a gluten-free diet. And these people will never die. The ones who are not put on a gluten-free diet will die from either hemorrhaging, okay, or their pre-existing conditions, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, kidney failure, that kind of stuff. But they don't die of a viral lung infection. And so, you know, what I've been doing, I said this in October of last year, that take people off of gluten, get them on the 90 essential nutrients, give their bone marrow everything it needs to, to make white blood cells, okay, antibodies, platelets, red blood cells, and we're good to go. And so this is what's happening now. Now it's being reported that people, they say, we don't know why. This is, I love it when they say, we don't know why, but people with a chronic history of celiac disease or irritable bowel syndrome, um, they don't seem to die when they have a COVID, uh, when they have a COVID infection, and of course they're not paying attention because these people are on a steroid to lower the inflammation in the intestines. They're also um, on a gluten-free diet, so their intestines can absorb nutrients. All of these pre-existing conditions are nutritional deficiencies. And they're telling you the reason why these aren't genetic, although doctors say, oh, your diabetes is genetic. No, it's just simple nutritional deficiency. High blood pressure is not genetic. Kidney failure is not genetic. Liver cirrhosis is not genetic. Um, things like psoriasis is a, another feature of a um, um, celiac disease because you can't absorb the nutrients necessary to prevent it. Oh, you got lupus. It's an autoimmune disease, which is just fibromyalgia, which is a simple nutritional deficiency disease with another nutrient deficiency. Uh, so they get this little um, rash on their face, okay? Um, they get the um, um, little rash on their face and they say, oh, you got lupus. No, you get them on a, a gluten-free diet, get them on the 90 and all that goes away, they will not die, okay? So that's the news, I'm very excited about that. And so we need to get this information out there to everybody. Um, whether you've been diagnosed with IBS or Crohn's disease or celiac disease or not, get gluten-free. Get on the 90 essential nutrients, throw in some extra MSM, vitamin D3, and uh, some collagen. And if you don't have any other issues, you're going to be a happy camper and you're going to live a long time. So you've been doing some comparison of some of the studies coming out of, the lesser known studies coming out of China, from what I understand. That's right. Um, and of course, um, when you look at it, and, people, and I said this back in October of last year, uh, because Wuhan province, that's where it all kind of started. And I said, they had to be eating gluten. They said, that's just China, they're rice eaters. I said, no, uh, Wuhan, there's a lot of Western people go there. There's a lot of stuff going on from the West. And so they provide food there. Well, it turns out that their biggest grain crop is wheat for export, for financing. And cities where there's a lot of Europeans and North Americans go there, um, for business or our university classes or training or something, or just tourism, they have all this wheat stuff. And there's a certain percentage of the Chinese population that, well, I like wheat. Now you look at the, the people who have the highest percentage of death rate. Okay, this was right away, this was in January of this year. The Italians, 10%. The average in the world is less than 4%, kind of like 3.8%. Italy was 10% because everything they eat was gluten, spaghetti, noodles, mustacholi, pizza crust, okay, their beer, their scotch, their bourbon, uh, their rye whiskey, everything is made from wheat, barley, rye, and oats, right? And then you take Germany, their neighbor right next door to them, they have the lowest rate 
of COVID death, 0.5%, because their source of carbohydrates is potatoes. You ever hear a German potato salad? Potatoes, baked potatoes, potato salad, mashed potatoes, corn, and rice, okay? Wheat is a very small thing for, for the Germans, and their rate of death is 0.5%. Uh, uh, so th I knew right away in, in, you know, in January of this year what it was, but nobody would believe me. And so now you just see information accumulates, 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 and people do the obvious research. And, and here we have it. It's documenting everything I began to share um, in October and November of 2019. And so I'm very, very excited about this and would really urge everybody uh, to get a hold of the, um, what we call the quartet of books. Let's play doctor, let's play herbal doctor, passport aromatherapy, and the, the fourth one, which made the quartet of books, it's all in your head, covers 25 different diseases, is caused by osteoporosis of the skull. And when you have osteoporosis all over, your bone marrow cannot do what it's supposed to do, make the white blood cells, which are the cavalry and the, and the Marines that go out and kill and eat the viruses, right? can't make the platelets to prevent you from bleeding, can't make the red blood cells, so you're anemic, and they have to give you um, transfusions every month, plus B12 and iron shots every month, okay, because you can't absorb those things if you take them orally, so they got to give it to you by injection, and they, oh, it's genetic. No, no, it's very simple nutritional deficiency disease caused by malabsorption, and of course, um, I just get very, very excited about this because um, I appreciate you, uh, Pharmacist Keith, because you see this. You've been working with me for a long time. And so, you know, you've seen many, many things come through your your clinic and, and through your watchful eyes. And so I appreciate that. And all the things that we do together, it's only going to get better because we're going to save the world. We know the answer. It's drop dead, unimpeachable, and let's go get them. Yeah, it's it's frustrating uh, when you're when you're dealing with uh, with all these things. You know, I, I, my mother-in-law was in the hospital this this weekend because she had a real high spike in her blood pressure, so we took her in to get her checked out. And one of the doctors there, the cardiologist there, just he said, "Don't keep get her off of her omega threes because omega threes do nothing. They do nothing." That's what it's, he said. Now, I've been working with her cardiologist, her cardiologist, not this hospitalist, for, since she was 50 years old. She's 80 years old now. She's been on omega-3s. We got, after she had her bypass in her 50s, we got her on these omega-3s, got her off all of her uh, prescription drugs with the cardiologist uh, approval. You know, we, we stepped mm -hmm. through with him. And she's been living a wonderful life ever since that time without any type of issues, without any additional uh uh, uh, blockage in her carotid arteries or anything. I mean, there's a little bit of blockage there, but it's 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 stayed there. It hasn't gotten any worse. And despite her not living with the healthy foods that we say, and despite the fact she continues to smoke, she had wonderful results every year when she went in. In fact, in January, when she went to see the cardiologist, he said that everything is fine. Let's keep her going. And it just irritates the heck out of me when you hear a doctor say something which is so stupid that omega-3s do nothing. The research is overwhelming. I mean, 20 years ago, I had a customer come into my pharmacy and say, you know, I heard that omega-3s help you control your cholesterol. How much do I need to take? I didn't know the answer because it wasn't in any of the, any of the, uh, re any of the um, reference books that we had in pharmacy, but I had heard the same thing. So I decided that I would go and research it. I told him I would. And I said, I know what it says on the bottle is not right. Because what what's on the bottle is the minimum daily requirement mm -hmm. that you need just to survive. Not what you need to thrive. Not what you need to uh, help your body rebuild itself. So I went and did the research. I found somewhere around 30 different articles. This was 20 years ago. 30 different articles that said omega-3s did all these wonderful things. 30 of them. I came across one from one of the uh, journals. Uh, it was either New England Medical, uh, New England Journal or the uh, JAMA. I can't remember which one. But that article, the big headline was, Omega-3s do nothing. 
So in pharmacy school, I had a professor that said, when you see an overwhelming body of evidence over here that says one thing, and then you have an article come up that says something completely different, you got to ask yourself three questions. Who sponsored it? Follow the money. What did they stand to gain or lose from the results? And then what did they do to get those results? So I looked at that particular study. It was funded by a statin company. So right away, we know what they stand to gain or lose. They want to sell that statin drug. They want to lower your cholesterol. So the, next, the, the third question is, what did they do to get different results than everybody else? They gave everybody 1,000 milligrams of omega-3. Now, this is important. All these other studies out there that had all these wonderful results, they gave anywhere from three, I'm sorry, from 6,000 to 9,000 milligrams of omega-3. That drug company knew the 1,000 milligrams is not enough. They got that article out to all the doctors to tell all the doctors, all the cardiologists that omega-3s do nothing. Your patients need to be on statin drugs. And I'll take it one step further. The pharmaceutical companies then patented their own omega-3. It's not the natural omega-3. It's made in a factory. They patented their own omega-3. And even in the studies with that, they only gave them 4,000 milligrams and told the doctors that they have to join that 4,000 milligrams with a statin drug. Because they knew daggone well, if they went over that 4,000 milligrams, they don't need that statin drug anymore. So that, this is what's frustrated me with this whole thing. I need, I need to read a disclaimer real quick. Uh, any food and dietary supplements that we mentioned in this presentation are intended to contribute to the daily diet and overall health, and they're not intended for use in prevention, treatment, mitigation, or cure of any disease or health-related condition. Individuals who have or suspect that they have an illness or who wish to commence a diet or exercise program should consult an appropriately licensed healthcare practitioner for medical history evaluation, diagnosis, treatment, and health recommendations. And folks, I recommend to you, interview your doctors, interview your nurse practitioners, see what their opinion is on nutrition and supplementation and its role in healing. If they tell you that taking a vitamin is nothing but peeing out expensive urine, then you don't want to go to that doctor. I have personally found many doctors now that are open and are willing to work with me when it comes to health and nutrition. So you want to make sure you interview them and make sure there's somebody that, ha that it has an open mind. I'm starting to see more and more of them. They're joining Dr. Wallach's army all the time. So, so, so keep that in mind. Uh, I want to ask you a question. You know, COVID is here. It's on us now. Uh, so it's going to be difficult for some of us that are really bad condition, have all these comorbidities to turn things around immediately. Uh, we know that in the future, something else is going to come that may be even worse than COVID. So what is it we need to do right now to prepare ourselves for the future so we don't have sneak up on us what has happened just now? Okay, that's that's a very, 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 very good question there. And before I answer it, I'm going to say one thing. When those doctors said, uh, okay, from the statin companies, oh, just take 1,000 milligrams of the, of the um, omega-3s. If you have damaged your intestines because you're eating gluten, that 1,000 milligrams, you may have only absorbed 2 milligrams. Okay, so that's part of the problem. Okay, now, answer me the question again. Okay, the, the coronavirus is on us full mm -hmm. force right now. And for a lot of us, you know, it's going to take time for us to get our bodies back to where it needs to be mm -hmm. to fight this thing. But we all know that sometime in the future, there's going to be another disease, another pandemic, another epidemic is going to come along. So how can we start preparing ourselves now so that when the next one comes here, we don't fall victim? Well, exactly. And you look in the history, pandemics would come sometimes every year. They have different ones would come every year. Sometimes it would come every three years, every five years, but they kept coming because we we never got rid of our susceptibility because everybody's eating gluten. Okay, it's the same problem uh, from the beginning, uh, going way back uh, 10,000 years ago when uh, wheat was a wild grass in India. And that's why 20 million people died in six months from the Spanish flu 100 years ago in India. In six months, 20 million died. Okay, <laughs> it's like crazy. Okay, well, here's the deal. All of these beautiful articles, I, I, I got about 25 of them when it comes to 
um, how to survive the current um, COVID-19 pandemic. Get off of gluten, take the 90, and you're going to help reduce the effects of these pre-existing conditions, okay? And also, um, you're not going to have a life-threatening effect from COVID. Now, the life-threatening effects from COVID are hemorrhaging, okay? And we're talking about abdominal hemorrhaging and also uh, hemorrhaging in your intestines, okay? Um, so you bleed to death in your intestines. And sometimes they're saying, oh, they got a basketball size um, blood clot in their pelvis, inside their pelvis. Well, how did all that blood get in there? Well, they were bleeding internally, okay, for weeks and weeks and weeks. And finally, uh, it clotted. But there, that blood was sloshing in there for weeks. And it's just coming out of the surface, uh, the outside surface, of the intestines, the liver, um, the kidneys. And it's coming from blood vessels. It's coming from everywhere. They're just bleeding uh, because they couldn't absorb the nutrients necessary for their bone marrow to make platelets, okay? And so they said, look, if you get on a gluten-free diet, that's the beauty of these articles. I mean, they went right to it. You get on a gluten-free diet and stay away from gluten, and, and of course, the, the physicians would also give them the um, anti-inflammatory drugs, okay, the, the steroids. And so between the steroids to kind of quiet the intestines down and get them on a gluten-free diet, I mean, we're talking 30, 60, 90 days, they're, they're home free. And this was very consistent, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, okay? And I've been saying that since October, and here it's all documented. So I'm glad you're recording this because this is going to be I'm one of those things that's going to save millions of people here, Pharmacist Keith. This little recording is going to save millions of people because they don't need to go to a doctor to get off of gluten. Okay, they don't need to go to a doctor to get on anti-inflammatory uh, product, things like that. Okay, I mean, it, it's one of those wonderful things that that's just the anti-inflammatory stuff. You just have to deal with the pre-existing conditions. And if you get on the, the appropriate supplements for that, they go away. And this is why I want people to get that quartet of books. Let's play doctor, let's play herbal doctor, passport, room therapy, and it's all in your head. And you'll get rid of all of these pre-existing conditions, okay, which is what put pressure on you. And if you would have um, COVID-19 and you, you were, you know, 100 pounds overweight, they'd say, oh, they died of obesity. Or no, they died of COVID. Okay, it depends on whose side they were. If they wanted to make a COVID thing, they'd say, oh, they died of COVID, but they really died of obesity. Or they died of diabetes. Um, no. They died of COVID. Okay, well, they won't be able to do that anymore because by taking the 90 essential nutrients appropriate for, for your um, pre-existing conditions. And so it's now you and COVID and you get off of gluten, you take your 90 essential nutrients free. I mean, this is already published stuff. Okay, and I just knew what questions to ask. I knew what questions to ask in the literary research. And the, the, the answers just popped right up because somebody else had asked the questions at the other end of the world. Well, that's because the uh, medical industrial complex isn't looking at that. They're looking at what can we design to make money off of. Exactly. I mean, what supports it, our it, theory? <laughs> it's not a hydrochloroquine deficiency. It's not a chloroquine deficiency. It's not a budesonide deficiency. It's not a steroid deficiency. It's a virus that's attacking us, everybody equally, but the people that have all these comorbidities because they have all these other diseases that are mineral deficiency diseases, they're the ones who are susceptible to death. They're the ones whose system cannot fight this. I mean, you get an A plus me and you have been case. talking years now, years <laughs> about how we need to stop these diseases and how we can use nutrition and supplementation to do it. I mean, inflammation is the, that's the big key to everything that's going on here. Some that's type correct. of inflammation in the body is causing some type of disease. It's because of a mineral deficiency. It's because we're eating crap. We're eating all these freaking chemicals in our food. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's destroying our body. You know, yeah, obesity yeah, well, is the number one thing in America. And this disease is hitting the obese the worst. 
Exactly. You get an A-plus for Mrs. Keith. And of course, my, one of my favorite, simplest ones that everybody can understand <clears throat> is obesity. Obesity. Now, <clears throat> doctors say, well, you just eat too much. Stop eating. Okay. Cut the carbohydrates out of your life. No fat. And then you're going to die from nutritional deficiencies, right? Oh, but, but they don't cut the carbohydrates. <laughs> they want you to eat whole grain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, eat some wheat. <laughs> okay, and then <clears throat> uh, basically what happens here is what you have to appreciate, there is a behavior called pica, P-I-C-A. And little babies during the 1940s when they came out with those baby formulas, and they're consuming those baby formulas, only three minerals in them, they developed a behavior called cribbing, which was just pica, but they were in a crib. They weren't. They couldn't eat dirt because they're in a crib. They would stand there and they'd hold the rail to the crib and they'd chew on the rail of the crib, so they called it cribbing. And then when horses would chew in that top rail in their stall in the barn, they called it cribbing because it looked like what the babies were doing in their crib. Well, that just related back to pica. When grandma would go out in the backyard and eat dirt with a spoon or she'd eat wood ashes out of the wood stove in the fireplace when she had these cravings because she was minerally deficient. Now, obesity was not a big thing 200 years ago. I mean, somebody was in a circus, they weighed 200 pounds. They thought that was a, a, a big deal, right? Oh, here's the fat lady kind of thing, right? Well, now it's not unusual. I see literally thousands of patients every year that weigh 400 pounds, 500 pounds, 600 pounds, okay? And that's because they have access to pretzels, pretzel sticks, um, potato chips, okay, which are naming after the governor of, or, or the mayor of New York or whatever it is now, Como chips. Okay, that way you have something to eat with your beer, right? So they're getting their gluten that way. But also, um, uh, they would eat all these other snack foods, corn puffs and so forth, <clears throat> because people said, well, why are we letting Grandma eat dirt? We can't make any money when she eats dirt. Let's just make her a pretzel stick, which she can chew on, with a little cup of beer or something, and um, she'll be happy now. Well, then she would gain her weight because it was a mineral deficiency driving her to have that behavior. It's called PICA, P-I-C-A. Everybody can look it up. And, of course, the book Rare Earths Within Cures goes into it big. Of course, our book, um, uh, let's see here. We have the book, um, uh, oh, Hell's Kitchen. And the CD, Hell's Kitchen, goes into obesity and diabetes. The CD and the book, Hell's Kitchen. I mean, these are the things that people should be reading. Well, would you look at that? <laughs> You got it. Yeah. And it's not like we don't know the science. It's just a matter of the proper education. And so these should be, um, uh, you know, we should have the, the state legislatures have a directive that says every medical school should use these te textbooks as textbooks in medical school. Okay. They should use them in medical school. And um, uh, they have to take a test on the book Dead Doctors Don't Lie. They have to take a test on the book Hell's Kitchen. They have to take a test on the book um, Epigenetics. They have to take a test on the book Let's Play Doctor. They have to take a test on the book Rare Earths Written Cures, okay? And they have to pass it with 90 or above before they get their, their degree, okay? And see, right now, they're not getting any of this information. They're not getting any of this information because none of it's in their textbooks. And then you have the professor saying, oh, that all, all that nutrition, just eat what eat well, you get everything you need. That is not true. Any, any physician who says that should be put in jail for life for reckless endangerment. Now, once you start doing that, they're going to say, well, these, these hippies are serious, man. We've got to tell people about the nutrition. Otherwise, you're going to jail. That's right. Yeah, the, the snack food industry understands this uh, desire for minerals. Okay, I mean, one of the companies had as their slogan, I bet you can't eat just one. They knew they put some salt in that, that you're minerally deficient. You're going to eat their product. Your body's going to taste the salt and think it's getting minerals, but because it's not, you're going to keep craving more and more and more and more. So the, the, the snack food industry understood this. That's why so many of the snack foods out there have so much salt in them. It's to drive you to keep eating more and more and more because your body is craving those minerals and it's not getting it because all it's getting is salt. I mean, take a look at Kentucky, we have a massive salt lick where back in the olden days, that's where the bison would, would congregate because they knew that they can get their minerals there. 
You know, they call it a salt lick, but basically any mineral is a salt. So they would lick that and get their minerals. Uh, the, the veterinary industry understands this. You know, they understand that you want to keep your cow healthy, you put a salt lick out there. The thoroughbred farms here, they have salt licks out, the, you know, blocks of salt out in the field. So the animals can get the salt that they need. And there's no, there's no doctor telling them you only get one lick. <laughs> they get whatever they need. And, yeah. and the other thing about this whole veterinary industry is they know if they want to get a cow fat so they can get it to the slaughterhouse sooner, what do they feed it? Grains. Lots and lots of grain, <laughs> lots and lots of corn, which is full of uh, fructose. They don't supplement it with minerals. So the cow at the, at the feedlot there just stands there in one spot and eats continuously all day long. And they know it. And yet the doctors are telling us each, you know, the, the food pyramid, top thing on the food pyramid, the biggest thing on the food pyramid is the grains. And then yeah, they wonder, why are we so obese? <laughs> because you don't exercise. Uh, <laughs> That's not the truth. And then and the doctor buys. Don't lie. Yeah, and then the doctor buys a, a gym. So he says, well, here, 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 I'll give you a couple of free tries at the gym. And of course, one of the things we put in the animal salt blocks is trace minerals. So when they're licking the salt, they're also getting the trace minerals. Okay. And when it comes to uh, mustard dystrophy, I like to show that example, of course. It's called white muscle disease in calves. So when they would kill the calf because it couldn't stand up, they'd cut it open, maybe eat some veal. The muscle is white like cheese. Okay, so they call it white muscle disease. It's just mustard history, what we would call mustard history in humans. Okay, and um, you can go into any feed store. Any farmer who cannot even read can go into a feed store and buy an injectable bottle of that nutrient, go to that calf that can't stand up, inject him with it, Come back an hour later and he's up nursing out, out of his mother's udder, okay? Because now he's cured him of the mustard history in like an hour by giving him an injection of that nutritional deficiency nutrient, okay, particular mineral. And of course, when Jerry Lewis took that to the, it, it makes me get teary eyed every time I think about it, um, he took that to the uh, Mustard History Association. They fired him before he even walked out the door. And they tried to run the telethon without him. And that was 2011. Then 2015, the telethon was totally dead. And you haven't heard nothing from the Mastrizzi Association since 2011. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's amazing, you know, what just a little bit of research, just a little bit of uh, research yourself can do. You know, another thing, uh, the COVID, it, it's hitting minorities a whole lot worse than it's hitting uh, the white population. And I've got a theory behind this, and I, I'll, I'll see if you agree. Um, okay. A, a, a lot of minorities are in economically depressed areas. They don't have very good grocery stores, very good access to good food. Uh, they get the, the ones that are on food stamps because they can't get good food they're spending all their money on all this junk food i mean back when i was in pharmacy school and i got assistance you know we bought good food and we ate really good but we had access to it some of these communities they just don't have access to it and they're living off this junk food and i think that's one of the reasons it has not i don't think it has anything to do with their race i think it no, has it, to do with their economic no. situation yeah. and their lack of a good diet uh because no. of where they live well, you get an A-plus there, pharmacist Key, because you hit the nail right on the head. Uh, when I came back from Africa in April of 1967 uh, to work on this 10-year uh, project where I did my 20,000 autopsies for my um, postdoctoral fellowship, my equivalent of a PhD degree, it's in the Smithsonian Institute, um, Marlon Perkins gave me two pieces of paper. He says, okay, this is what the National Institutes of Health wants you to do, look for um, animals in the big zoos that are dying from the same pollutants that humans are and people who are dying within a 10 mile radius of the big zoos in the big cities. And so if the, if the animals in the zoo start dying, we know to evacuate the cities, kind of like the canary in the mine for the old coal miners, right? But here's what I want you to look for. He says, right now, in every zoo in the world, every species of bears are dying from liver cancer and all the geneticists say that it's a genetic disease of bears. 
And we don't believe it because it never showed up until just this last couple of years. Now every bear, polar bears, black bears, brown bears, grizzly bears, Kodiak bears, sun bears, they're all dying of liver cancer. And I said, I already, before you've said the last word, I already know what's causing it, okay? These are big animals. They weigh, you know, 500 pounds to 1,000 pounds. What are they feeding them? Well, because they're so big, you know, these zoos, they get, you know, a little fixed income, so to save money, they get the old bread from the um, uh, thrift stores, okay, that uh, they can't sell. Is that they're out of date loaves of bread, and some of them actually have aspergillus bread mold growing on them, and they give them or sell them to the thrift stores. And so they buy them for 10 cents a loaf and stuff like that. And they'll give a big bear, say, three loaves of this old bread and a fish, a raw fish. And that keeps their weight up and they're happy because they get the fish and they get the bread and they're happy. They also uh, buy 50-pound bags of um, peanuts that are still in the shell and have some mold on them. And um, they feed them some of those peanuts. I said, okay, okay. And, and Perkins had just picked me up from the airport. I still got my suitcases in my hand. I said, let's go by the zoo. He said, okay. So we go by the zoo, and I said, let's stop by the hospital and get a, a black light, okay? It's a UV light. You push the button, and the UV light comes on um, by batteries or plug-in. And um, do you have a barn or something where you store all this old bread for the bears? And I, yeah, we have to have so much all the time. As it comes available, we just buy it all. And so let's go by there. So close all the windows, close all the doors, and we turned out all the lights, and I turned on the black light, and that – old bread glowed like a green light at a stop intersection. He said, what's, what's that happening? I said, well, um, the old bread has aspergillus on it. It's bread mold. Everybody knows it is bread mold. It's got that blue-green mold on there. And usually if there's three slices of bread with obvious bread mold on it, they just throw it away and eat, you know, people eat the other bread. But it's water-soluble so that the, the aflatoxin, which is a byproduct of that aspergillus growth, goes through the whole loaf of bread. Okay, now this aflatoxin causes liver cancer in all vertebrates. That's why you're seeing it in these bears because that's all over the world. They're giving them the bread because they learned that they can save money by giving these bears three or four or five loaves of bread and a, and a big raw fish. Okay, that's the problem. Now switch them all to dog food, and within six months' time, all of the liver cancer in bears around the world stopped. Now that's written up. Okay, I wrote that up in public. It's one of my publications. Now here's what happens. Poor people, whether they're white or black or yellow or red or what language they speak, they buy food from the thrift store because they don't have any money. And if they see a little bit of bread mold on two slices of bread in that loaf, they just throw that away and eat the rest of that loaf, which has the aflatoxin in it, and they get liver cancer. That's why poor people get liver cancer and rich people who eat caviar don't. So you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what's happening there. Well documented, I've published that. Yeah, it's it's amazing, uh, you know. What what again? It's amazing what you learn, and I've been so lucky to be able to spend time with you on the road over over a year and a half period. But uh, you know, one of the things I want to to say to everybody, you know, if you're driving down that interstate, the interstate of life, and that red engine light comes on, you get pain in your joints. Uh, you know, you you're, you've got a headache. You, you've got stomach issues. That red engine light comes on. Do you pull that car over and cut the, the wire to that red engine light? Or do you find out what's going on? That's what the medical system is doing. They're cutting the wire to that red engine light and they're giving us a pharmaceutical drug to treat a symptom. They're not asking the question, what's causing that symptom? Let's trace it back a few steps, You know, see what's going on. They just see the body is reacting to a certain thing high blood pressure, so they design a drug that blocks an enzyme pathway in your body that causes the blood pressure to go up. But that blood pressure going up is a natural thing because something else is going on. So they're cutting the red engine light to stop the blood pressure from going up instead of finding out why is it going up the first place. Same thing with statin drugs, same thing with uh, diabetes. These are all drugs that are treated to cut that red engine light, treat the symptom, and not address the core issue, which is mineral deficiencies. You're exactly right. And that was the same thing that they did with the COVID-19. Oh, this is a cousin to SARS and MERS and H1N1, which was a Spanish flu. So we have to have all these $10,000 respirators because all these people are going to die from respiratory. None. 
type of respiratory, okay? Because it's not a respiratory virus, okay? It just kind of gives you common cold-like symptoms if you're three years old, and in three days' time, your body cures itself. It's yeah, only it's when amazing. you young. <laughs> it's amazing those first few months of the virus that suddenly people weren't dying of heart disease. People weren't dying of heart attacks. They weren't dying of complications of diabetes. Everybody was dying of COVID. That always amazed me. <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough for recording this because it's going to be a lifesaver for humanity because it's going to educate this living community we have now around the world. And they're ready because they're frustrated. You know, people aren't dumb. They see what's going on and they can't quite put their finger on it, but they know they're not getting the correct information. Now, Dr. Wallach, it's really been a pleasure talking with you about all this. I enjoy our time every week. Uh, for those that don't know, we do this every week on Monday, uh, 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 11 a.m. Um, Eastern time. Uh, on the Facebook page, Give Doc 90 Days, as well as on the Zoom. So I encourage you to uh, mark it on your calendars to uh, be with us. Uh, we normally try to answer some questions. Uh, today, we don't have the time for that, but that's normally what we do. We, we talk about some topic that's in the uh, news and uh, you know talk about that for a little bit, and then we move on to answering some questions. Uh, so if you have questions that you'd like to have answered on a future episode, send me an email at askpharmacistkeith at live.com, askpharmacistkeith at live.com. I've got a couple uh, uh, free gifts for folks that jumped on today. Uh, I have the video that you can watch online. Uh, it's the sequel to Dead Doctors Don't Lie called Someone Should Go to D Jail. Uh, you can get that as well as a report from Dr. Wally uh, called Why So Many Young Athletes Die. Those are both free just for watching this uh, program. And at the, on that website, there is a link to a health evaluation that you can take. And uh, we try to answer some of those on the air. The information that's on the health evaluation is private. It's not shared by me with anybody else. Uh, I'm a pharmacist. I respect your privacy and that information is kept private. So the place to get these gifts is dddlvideo.com. Uh, that's like dead doctors don't lie, dddlvideo.com. And Dr. Wallach, really appreciate you being on here, and I uh, can't wait to uh, talk with you again in the future. God bless. Thank you so much, Pharmacist Keith. Beautiful as usual, and I can't wait to see the finished product here from our discussion this morning because it's going to save millions of people. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless you too. Thanks for tuning in to the Health and Wellness Hour with Dr. Joel Wallach and Pharmacist Keith Abel. If you found value in this episode, be sure to like and share. Also, to be notified when the next episode is posted, click on the subscribe button, then hit that little bell symbol. If you have any questions or comments for Pharmacist Keith or Dr. Wallach, you may send a private email to askpharmacistkeith at live.com or by visiting the Facebook page, Give Doc 90 Days to Better Health, Wellness, and Longevity. To hear more from Pharmacist Keith, subscribe to this Prosperity Rx podcast. Prosperity Rx is your prescription for prosperity. Prosperity is more than just creating wealth. Prosperity includes health and wellness, personal development and motivation, as well as financial peace and prosperity. Subscribe to Prosperity Rx on your favorite podcast platform. To hear more from Dr. Wallach, he has two nationally syndicated radio programs daily, Dead Doctors Don't Lie and Let's Play Doctor. Check your local radio listings for details. Also, check out the archives of his past shows at radio.givedoc90days.com. One last thing, if you'd like to join Dr. Wallach's crusade to share his message with others, contact Pharmacist Keith, and he'll teach you how to share the message and create some extra income at the same time. Contact Pharmacist Keith through his email address, keith at prosperityrx.com, or call or text at 502-212-2929. Remember, Keith is still a practicing pharmacist and can't always pick up the phone right away, so leave your name, number, and best time to call, and he'll return your call as soon as possible. Thanks again for tuning in.